I think he was very dedicated in what he did, not just our project, but other projects. You know, he had many connections to the CHC community. People looked up to him. Welcome to the 15th season of Heart to Heart with Anna. I am Anna Jaworski and the host of your program. Today's show is Remembering David Franco and Silent Cries. And our guests are Philip Wolf, Nicole Vickery, and Dr. Gregory Johnson. Philip Wolf was born and raised in Texas. At the age of 10, he received his first Panasonic camcorder, which recorded to VHS tape and sparked his love of filmmaking. In 1997, he married Patience, and their first child, Jeremiah, was born on March 2nd, 1999. Jeremiah was born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome and survived to 14 and a half months. Jeremiah's passing inspired Philip to pen a memoir and a children's book and a documentary, Silent Cries, Breaking Through CHD Awareness. Nicole Vickery was born in 1970 with Tetralogy of Fallot. She was extremely cyanotic and has undergone multiple surgeries. Nicole attended the University of South Alabama, majoring in business finance with a minor in public relations. Currently, Nicole lives in Huntsville, Alabama with her daughter, who was adopted from China in 1996. She devotes herself to congenital heart defect education and was the executive producer and producer of Silent Cries, Breaking Through CHD Awareness. Dr. Greg Johnson has been a pediatric cardiologist and adult congenital cardiologist in Austin since 1996 and has been a pediatrics-affiliated cardiologist since 2004. He did his cardiology training at Texas Children's Hospital. He is on the faculty of Dell Medical School at the University of Texas at Austin. He is the medical director of the ACHD program of Central Texas. Dr. Johnson lives in Austin with his wife, Nancy, and five children. He was David Franco's personal cardiologist and is featured in the film Silent Cries with David Franco. I'm going to start our program with you, Philip Wolf. So welcome back to Heart to Heart with Anna Philip. My longtime listeners may remember you from season 14 when you were on our program celebrating the production of Silent Cries. Thanks, Anna. I appreciate you inviting me back. Well, I'm sorry that we have to come back for such a sad reason. I know that all of us have been affected by David Franco's passing in March of 2020. Yeah, it's devastating. And even though he's not a relative of mine, there's still a hole in me. You know, something's missing. I know. I know. I feel that profoundly. Can you tell me how you met David? Sure. I met David Franco through Nicole Victory back in 2016. Mm -hmm. And Nicole had already been helping me on the film Silent Cries, which you mentioned. And she's been helping me since 2014 when she came aboard the project. After she introduced us, we pitched the film to David one day over the phone. And we were looking for someone to help us get through a lengthy standstill, if you will, in the project due to the lack of funding. Mm -hmm. Once we pitched it to David, he was pretty much hooked, and he wanted to know how he could get involved. So we brought him on board to help us complete the documentary, which is Silent Cries, Breaking Through CHD Awareness. And his role that we assigned him was co-producer on the film, and we also included his story in the documentary. Right. So it sounds like David's participation was instrumental in you completing the film. Oh, yeah. He helped us bring in the financial backers so we could move forward in full production because in the past we were just doing like sporadic productions because of the funding that we had at the time. And he also helped uh, back the film via his own contributions during some of our Indiegogo crowdfunding campaigns, which was awesome. And he was very persistent in seeing this film through because he knew it meant something to me. Right. Yeah, I know it really was an important project to him. I remember him having a lot of conversations with me about Silent Cries and how he was so excited that he was selected to be part of it. Do you have a favorite memory of working with David on the film? I do. Actually, David was like family to me, and he visited us several times and hung out with my own family. 
And one of the best memories I had of him was my parents had invited him over for dinner one evening at their house where he struck up a lengthy conversation with my father before he passed away in January. And David loved listening to my dad's old Southern stories because he's from Mississippi. And I'm just <laughs> glad that my dad was able to, you know, able to meet him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It's really tough. I know I lost my mom two years ago. And David was a good friend to me through that loss. He knows how much it hurt me to lose my mom. So I'm sure that he provided what comfort he could for you as well. Yeah, and one other memory I think I wanted to share was he loved playing the guitar. And one time he brought it with him for a visit at our house. And during his visit, he decided to play the guitar in front of my kids. So they sat in the living room and watched him play. And I decided to capture that moment on video. And so I included that as B-roll footage in the film. So you can see that in the movie now. And he just loved entertaining people. I've had the good fortune of hearing him play, and what surprises me, Philip, is that he was self-taught. Yep. He was just really, really a talented man. He was. He'll be missed. Texas Heart Institute were offering us a mechanical heart, and he said, no, Dad, I've had enough. Give it to someone who's worthy. My father promised me a golden dress to twirl in. He held my hand and asked me where I wanted to go. Whatever strife or conflict that we experienced in our long career together was always healed by humor. Heart to Heart with Michael. Please join us every Thursday at noon Eastern as we talk with people from around the world who have experienced those most difficult moments. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The opinions expressed in the podcast are not those of Hearts Unite the Globe, but of the hosts and guests and are intended to spark discussion about issues pertaining to congenital heart disease or bereavement. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Anna. If you have a question or comment that you would like addressed on our show, please send an email to Anna Jaworski at Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. That's Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. Now, back to Heart to Heart with Anna. Before the break, we talked with Philip about how Silent Cries brought him and David Franco together. Now we're going to talk to David's close friend and heart sister, Nicole Vickery. Nicole, welcome back to Heart to Heart with Anna. My longtime listeners may remember you from season four when your show was entitled Silent Cries, moving from philanthropist to producer, or maybe from season eight when you were on a show with Sarah Clark called Transitioning from Teen to Adult, or maybe they'll even remember you from your eponymous podcast called Heart to Heart with Nicole and David. Oh, well, thank you, Anna. It's good to be back in the studio with you today. Yeah, this is fun. It is, indeed. Well, let's start by having you tell us how you and David met. He stole my trike. My trike is what we call it. We were, let's see, I think I was two or three He's three years older than me, so he's about four or five. And I was riding the big wheel at the UAB Children's Playroom where we patients were able to hang out in 1972. You guys were both at the University of Alabama? We were at the University of Alabama in Birmingham when we were children. I was in there for my first surgery, Uh and he was in there for, I think, his second we were just little kids, and he came up and stole my trikey from me. <laughs> <laughs> do you and actually remember him, or do you just remember he, this from your mom? I remember the stories from my mother, and David remembered it, him being a few years older than me. Uh-huh. And when we met as adults, I think it was three, four years ago, we got to comparing notes when we were at UAB together having surgery, and it came up like, Oh, you're the chick from Alabama. <laughs> He's from <laughs> New York City. And here I am, you know, I live in Huntsville. And and then we meet back around as adults after that. It's quite a fun little story that we get to tell. How'd you meet Nicole? Oh, I stole her trike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so neat that you guys reconnected so many years later. Was it on the internet that you reconnected? We did connect on Facebook, I believe. And then he, living in Austin, in me in Huntsville, Alabama, I 
was going to be in Dallas doing some work on the film with Philip, and I was actually speaking at a group there in Dallas. And so he drove over from Austin to meet me in person. And he said, I got to meet this girl, you know, as an adult. And it was just really sweet. He came over to meet us and we ate the next day at IHOP and started figuring all this stuff out. And we were close from the get go. That's just so cool. I just love that story. So why did you want to be a co-host with David on a podcast? I wanted to be a co-host with David because he's, well, he had such a good energy about him. He has a really wonderful heart and wanted to give to the CHD community. And he wanted to give on a a bigger scale than he had in the past. He he he's an entertainer. Anybody that knew him for even a minute knew that he was entertaining you from the minute he met till the last time he spoke. And it was, I thought, would be a good match because he, his personality was calmer, quieter, more laid back. He was into production. And then I'm the outgoing, boisterous one. And I thought we'd make a good team. It, it proved true. We really did. Yeah. He liked being behind the scenes and you liked being out in front. So that did make you guys a good team. It really did. And he did. He liked to be back there fiddling with the things that <laughs> with all the equipment and making things sound good. And he wanted to make me sound good. Yeah. And sweet. You know, I right. think that was important. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, why did you ask David to become part of silent cries? Well, the weekend that I mentioned when I came over to meet Philip and myself, we wanted to talk to him more. He wanted to be involved with silent cries at any level at all. Do you, you need me to raise money? Do you, you need help on the set? What do you want me to do? Put me to work. And of course, we always need warm bodies that want to work. And it was just a wonderful thing to have him come over, volunteer, without even having ever met us. Mm-hmm. And so we lined out, laid out the film to him, what our dream and our vision was. He signed on that day and wanted to be a co-director. So we put him to work as our co-director, and he was brilliant in the role. Well, he must have been, and all of you are so talented. I understand that your production has won some kind of international award. Can you tell me about that? Thank you for asking. Yes, we we like to joke. It's serious, but it's fun to say that international filmmaker and and award-winning movie, we won Best Documentary in 2019 at the London Liftoff Film Festival. And we had... Hold on, sweetie. At the, our, in, at the yeah. what? What did you say? It's the London Film Festival Okay. for all of the United Kingdom. But we won a Best Documentary in 2019. That is so amazing. What a feather in your cap. Thank you. It's quite a thrill. It's a, a predominant film festival that we just decided, oh, well, let's try it. And yes, we did. We won and couldn't believe it. It was still kind of pinching ourselves. Did that really happen or we dream it? Now, um, did you all go we, over there to receive the award? We are supposed to go in June. Now, it depends if we can do it financially or not remains to be seen. But we're looking forward to it and we're going to do everything we can to be there. That it's just such a thrill. Wonderful. What a great honor. Thank you. It really is. Hi, my name is Jamie Alcroft, and I just published my new book, The Tin Man Diaries. It's an amazing story of my sudden change of heart as I went through a heart and liver transplant. I can think of no better way to read The Tin Man Diaries than to cuddle up in your favorite Hearts Unite the Globe sweatshirt and your favorite hot beverage, of course, in your Hearts Unite the Globe mug, both of which are available at the Hug Podcast Network online store. Or visit heartsunitetheglobe.org. Tonight Forever by the Baby Blue Sound Collective. 
I think what I love so much about this CD is that some of the songs were inspired by the patients. Many listeners will understand many of the different songs and what they've been inspired by. Our new album will be available on iTunes, Amazon.com, Spotify. I love the fact that the proceeds from this CD are actually going to help those with congenital heart defects. Enjoy the music. Home tonight forever. Heart to Heart with Anna is a presentation of Hearts Unite the Globe and is part of the Hug Podcast Network. Hearts Unite the Globe is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing resources to the congenital heart defect community to uplift, empower, and enrich the lives of our community members. If you would like access to free resources pertaining to the CHD community, please visit our website at www.congenitalheartdefects.com for information about CHD, the hospitals that treat children with CHD, summer camps for CHD survivors, and much, much more. Before the break, we were talking with Nicole about her friendship with David. Now I'd like to talk with Dr. Gregory Johnson, who was David's cardiologist for many years. So welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna, Dr. Johnson. Hey, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be on the podcast. Well, I'm glad to finally have you on the podcast. I've had the good fortune of meeting you at one of the Heart Walks. It was, right. at Central Texas, right. it was at the Central Texas Heart Walk, and I think it was, golly, I want to say three or four years ago. It's been a while. Yeah, I loved going to the Heart Walks. Yeah, yeah. It's always a good time, and there's always so many people there. And the one that we went to, they had a DJ who was also playing music. I think they even had somebody come from the Round Rock Express, the mascot from Round Rock Express. Do you remember that? Yes, that sounds familiar. Yeah, it was really cool. Well, I know that David really, really respected you, and he considered you so much more than a doctor. He told me that he also considered you a friend. I know that David was really excited about bringing you into the Silent Cries production. So can you tell me how he got you involved? Well, it was during one of our office visits, and he brought up the subject and asked me if I would be part of that. And I was really flattered that he asked me. It was a great opportunity to talk about congenital heart disease awareness, both in adults and in children. I do see both adults and children with congenital heart disease. Uh, It was very interesting to see the process of putting together the documentary. I thought David and Philip and Nicole did a great job putting it all together. They captured a wide range of experience, which included children with congenital heart disease, adult congenital heart disease patients, parents of congenital heart disease patients, congenital heart surgeons, and then congenital cardiologists like myself. I felt like the film offered a very thought-provoking look at congenital heart disease. It showed both the positives and the negatives of living with congenital heart disease. It was really a privilege to be part of it. Yeah, I guess as a doctor, it's not every day that you get a chance to do something like that, is it? No, no, that was the first for me. I've done some television news stories about congenital heart disease, but that was a first for me to be part of a documentary. Do you have a favorite memory of David that you'd like to share with us, Dr. Johnson? I used to love meeting with David in the office. We would talk about his cardiology issues and things that were going on, but we would also talk about our families and the other parts of our lives. We would talk about what books we were reading. Every time he came in to one of our appointments, he would be reading some book and would give me an opportunity to maybe find out about a new good book, movies we liked. It was a wonderful time. We were both Catholic, so we would talk about religion I would make him listen to me talking to him about soccer, which is a love of mine. (laughs) Uh, I'm not sure how much he appreciated that. (laughs) I'm sure he enjoyed it. I really enjoyed seeing him in the office. I have great memories of that. It's so nice to hear a cardiologist saying that he enjoyed the visits as much as I know David enjoyed the visits with you because I'm a heart mom. My son was born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, and I remember going to see the cardiologist. And sometimes we too would 
talk about something other than just my son's heart defect. And I also felt like our cardiologist was part of our family. Do you have that kind of relationship with all of your patients' families? Uh, you know, I, I feel like I have that relationship with many patients and their families, the nature of congenital heart disease and the nature of these relationship is that they're for a lifetime. If you're born with congenital heart disease, that's something that will stay with you for the rest of your life. To me, I see it as a blessing to be able to know these families from when the child was a newborn and watch them as they grow up. I've been doing this now long enough that I have patients I knew as babies that are well into their 20s. And I have you know many patients that I've had 20 plus year relationships with. And it's been a wonderful part of my job. I, I feel very blessed to be able to do what I do. Is that one of the reasons why now you're working with adults with congenital heart disease? I've always had an interest in adults with congenital heart disease. When I was early in my medical training, I couldn't decide exactly what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do cardiology, and I found both adult cardiology and pediatric cardiology very interesting. And so I did, my residency training was combined internal medicine and pediatrics residency, which would have allowed me to do either one. And so after I did my pediatric cardiology training, I decided to also do the adult congenital heart disease part, which, which I have always found very interesting. Well, in today's program, we're sharing memories about David Franco since he passed away on March 12th, 2020. What do you think people should know about David Franco, Dr. Johnson? Well, David was a great advocate for patients with congenital heart disease. He usually attended all the local events that we had in support of congenital heart disease, like the congenital heart walk that we discussed. He also went to the National Adult Congenital Heart Association meetings. He was a great advocate, both for himself and for these patients. The Silent Cries documentary, that was another example of his interest in supporting patients with congenital heart disease. How important do you think it is it for us to have documentaries like the Silent Cries documentary? I think it's very important because I think it really gives the average person out in the community an idea of what it's like to be a patient with congenital heart disease or a parent of a child with congenital heart disease and really get a good idea of what that world is like. Congenital heart disease is its own a special medical condition, and it's its own unique community, and it's a lifelong condition. And I think it's important to educate the general population about those issues. Anna Jaworski has written several books to empower the congenital heart defect, or CHD, community. These books can be found at Amazon.com or at her website, www.babyheartspress.com. Her bestseller is The Heart of a Mother, an anthology of stories written by women for women in the CHD community. Anna's other books, My Brother Needs an Operation, The Heart of a Father, and Hypoplastic Left Heart Syndrome, a handbook for parents, will help you understand that you are not alone. Visit babyheartspress.com to find out more. Well, now I have Philip Wolf and Dr. Johnson in the studio together, and I want us to share a few more memories about David, because David was so central to the final production coming to life. I know it took quite a few years. Can you tell me a little bit about the process, Philip? Because I don't think most people realize how much time and effort goes into putting together a documentary like Silent Cries. Uh, sure, so much of time. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned before in one of your previous episodes, we actually filmed a pilot episode for this movie, which was 20 minutes in length. And that was filmed in 2010 and we released it in 2012. Once we released that in 2012, that's when we started the feature film, Silent Cries Breaking Through CHD Awareness. So it took us a good six, seven years from start to finish. 
The biggest hurdle that we ran into was the funding because as an independent filmmaker, not everybody knows who you are. Unless you know somebody in the industry, you know, it'll help. But it's that first time filmmaker, you've got to make a great impression. Some people say, oh, you got to have an A actor in your film in order for it to get recognition. Sometimes that is true, but it all depends on how you market it, promote it, and the word of mouth. But basically, like I said, funding was the biggest hurdle. Everything else was, you know, we were ready to go for shooting the film, but we just couldn't do it without the funds for renting all the equipment that we needed and the crew. Right. I know that when I was talking to David, when he was working with you, he told me that you all went to quite a few different locations to do this film. Can you tell me a little bit about that? We did an Indiegogo campaign to fund the trip to Los Angeles, where myself, Nicole, and Kevin Johnson, he was also a co-producer on the film. We flew out to Los Angeles, California, and met a professional kickboxer who was the first to return to the ring from an open heart surgery due to a CHD that he had. So we featured the kickboxer, Mark Fight Shark Miller, in our movie. And I guess you could say he's our A actor that we were trying to find <laughs> to, to participate in our film. As a professional in the industry of what he did, you know, it just blew our mind that we never even heard that he did this and he kickboxed in other countries. Wow. So he was really cool. Yeah. I just love the photos you have of him. He looks so badass. And I don't usually curse on my show, but that's the only <laughs> adjective I can think of to describe Mark, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's got all those tattoos and he looks yeah. like he really could take you down. Oh, yeah. He can. He was quite the character in the movie. That was a very interesting part of the film to watch. Yeah, absolutely. He did a lot of training after he retired. I mean, he trained other professionals. So, But now I think he's fully retired and you know, just taking it easy now. Kickboxing is tough for anybody, but for somebody like Mark, he's been on my program before too. It's tough on your body and his heart is not 100%. So I think it's probably even harder on somebody like him. Right, Dr. Johnson? Right. It's some degree it depends on what your congenital heart disease is and, and the particular issues, but he was obviously very fit and he did well with his athletic endeavors. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, he told me he has rods in his back on top of everything, which just is wow. amazing to me. It just came to me. I haven't had many kickboxers on my show. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of stands out. He's a standout guy. Oh, um, yeah. So David was telling me that not only did you all go to L.A., but I seem to recall him telling me you were filming in Dallas. And didn't he even say you all went to Corpus Christi and did some filming? No, we filmed in Austin, in Dallas, Los Angeles. Most of it was out here. We also went to Huntsville and filmed Nicole, Huntsville, Alabama. That has to be uh, part of the reason why it took so long to do this documentary. Yes. We actually put a word out on Facebook of families to participate that would like to share their story. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for specific ones that we haven't already included. Because originally, this documentary was only going to focus on hypoplastic left heart syndrome because right. of the pilot episode. Right. And then we decided, you know, we need to expand this. We need to have more variety because there's more than just one heart defect. So people know this. Right. So that's how I met Nicole through Twitter. And then through Twitter was David Franco to her, to me. <laughs> Which expanded so, uh, it right there because your son was born with hypoplastic left heart, but Nicole had tetralogy of Fallot and David had CCTGAs. Right there, right. You had quite a, a range of different congenital heart defects. Yes, and then we had Tucker Hamilton. He's the little boy who had the heart surgery that we showed. His family was so kind to get with their support group, which was Amazing Little Hearts, and they allowed us to go into the hospital and film the actual surgery so we can have that as an educational tool for parents to understand what's going on with my child's heart when they're in surgery. What are they doing? I need to know more information. So that's one reason why we wanted to include that. 
Right. Well, I know that there are going to be people who haven't had a chance to see this yet, and they're going to want to know how they can watch this program. So can you tell them where they can find this documentary? Sure. It's on Amazon Prime Video. Just go to Amazon.com and search Silent Cries, and it's pretty much the first one that pops up. Is that the only place that it's available is on Amazon? Yes. Okay. So if you want to see this documentary, Silent Cries, simply go to Amazon. You have an Amazon? Yes, Amazon. You can rent it or purchase it. Oh, cool. You don't have to buy it. You can just rent it. Yes, I think three ninety nine is for the SD and four ninety nine is the HD version. Great. Dr. Johnson, I know that you have some other special memories of David and this film that you wanted to share. Can you tell us about them? Sure. One of my fondest memories was being struck by what a great father he was and how much he loved his daughter, Sarah. I have a daughter who's about the same age. And we used to talk about our daughters when we'd meet in the office. They both went to Catholic schools. David used to love to talk about Sarah, and he was so proud of her. And I used to love to see him just to kind of get caught up and find out what Sarah was up to. It was obvious that he loved her very much. Um, I know he was very loved by his family and is going to be missed. I miss him very much. Yes, yes, me too. Is there anything else that we need to let people know about David, gentlemen? Yeah, I think he was very dedicated in what he did. Not just our project, but other projects. You know, he had many connections to the CHC community. People looked up to him. That's true. And I just think he was very dedicated in what he was pursuing and to get the word out as an advocate. Absolutely. I mean, he had his own podcast with me for a little while. He and Nicole did a podcast together. After it went on hiatus, he came and worked pretty much full time with me on Heart to Heart with Anna. He became a sound engineer. He became my producer. I miss him so much. Yeah, he'll be missed for sure. At the Heart Walks out here in Dallas, he came out here a couple times to be a guest speaker at one of the Heart Walks. This was for Amazing Little Hearts. And he rounded up all the kids and he read from our story book in front of all the kids, which I think was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I saw that you had on your website some footage of Nicole reading to some children as well. Yes, that was a marketing campaign we did. That's a little commercial that we filmed for the book when it first came out. Oh, okay. It's like a little TV spot that we have on our website. Yeah. Well, it looks real good. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming on the program today, Philip. It was great to have you back on the show. Thank you again for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I love hearing about all the creative projects you're working on. It seems like you always have something going on. I'm always trying to stay busy. (laughs) (laughs) And thank you for coming on the program for the first time, Dr. Johnson. I hope it won't be the only time. Thank you very much for having me. I'd be happy to join you again if you'd like me back. That would be wonderful. You guys did a great job. And that concludes this episode of Heart to Heart with Anna. Thanks for listening today, everybody. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please consider becoming a patron. Just go to www.patreon.com slash heart to heart and pledge a monthly amount to support our program. It only takes a few minutes to make a big difference. For the cost of a pizza, you can help us continue to provide programming for the CHD community for an entire year. Have a great day. And remember, my friends, you are not alone. Thank you again for joining us this week. We hope you have been inspired and empowered to become an advocate for the congenital heart defect community. Heart to Heart with Anna, with your host, Anna Jaworski, can be heard every Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern Time.